Fan tracks, fantasy football, weekly mailbag show. Let's get into it. Why are the fantasy app projections so low on Waddle? ADP is high, but his point projections are similar to Ayuk, around 12 a game. So Waddle has dealt with that core issue. Uh, I think sometimes the injuries or the question marks with injuries can bake into projections, but this is a guy that has averaged around 15 fantasy points per game the last two seasons. 1,356 receiving yards last year. He has high receiving yard upside. He is a beast after the catch. His numbers went down a little bit without Tua last year. It was evident that him with Tua was better for fantasy football. So I think he has true top 12 upside. He's probably going to be a guy that's just outside of the top 12 this year, but it might be because of the injury or maybe he is being under projected, but I love that connection with Tua. Need to drop one to pick up a defense. Any suggestions? So we got Samaj P. Ryan, who is either the handcuff to Javante Williams or is in some sort of committee if he's not to the health that they want him to be. Elijah Mitchell will split some carries on the ground with Christian McCaffrey. Again, more of a handcuff, though. Brees Hall is going to have Dalvin Cook. Uh, Zach Charbonnet, what is that going to look like with Kenneth Walker? Uh, I'm going to leave the wide receivers alone. I like both of those guys a lot. Daniel Jones, I'm assuming, is your backup quarterback. Elijah Mitchell was just under 1,000 rushing yards his rookie season, and that was through only 11 games. He averaged 14 fantasy points per game. I think he is one of, if not the best handcuffs in fantasy football when healthy, so you're keeping him. Brees Hall, I don't know what the Delvin split's going to look like. I think that they are a win-now team, and they want Brees Hall not to be rushed into tons of volume, but the talent is obviously there. I'm going to keep him. I'm going to keep Zach Charbonnet, too. Pass-catching running back. A decent draft capital, pretty good prospect. I think Samaj P. Ryan is the odd man out here. Just if any of these guys were completely healthy and got the full workload, I think I'd take the rest over P. Ryan, who did do good things last year. Yes, I know, but I like these other guys better. Do I need to upgrade at running back? So Montgomery and Pierce, Lamb, Alave, Higgins, Higby at tight end. Montgomery looked good yesterday. You know, does uh, Gibbs eat more into that workload throughout the season? Probably, but I think Montgomery's going to have some touchdown upside. I think uh, he's going to get plenty of touches to keep him relevant. Uh, Pierce, Devin Singletary's there now. I'm not super high on Pierce, but I expect him to have you know pretty steady uh, volume week to week. I think with this specific lineup, I don't know what is going on on the bench. You have to figure, hey, I have three very good wide receivers. You know, C.D. Lamb, Chris Olave, T. Higgins, all three of those guys could be top 12 wide receivers this year. So I think that can compensate for a lack of, you know, running back star power. And when you go and draft this way, this is kind of what happens. I think I'd rather have, you know, stud top 12 potential wide receivers than, you know, take the, the risk at running back. So I don't mind this lineup. I would say you probably need some running back depth on that bench. I don't know if you have it, but when you got three stud wide receivers, I think you'll you'll be okay week to week. 14 team league, 0.5 PPR, panic button or too soon. Cup, Christian Watson, etc. So, yeah, obviously with uh, Cooper Cup and Christian Watson, injury concerns already. And when it comes to trading, you're not going to get a good return for either one of those guys. You're not going to put somebody that's banged up on the trade block and somebody's going to pay up for those guys. I look at this bench and I see a bunch of running backs. So if I'm you right now, I look and I say, hey, you know what? Damian Harris might have some touchdown upside with Buffalo, might split carries. I don't know how Penny's looking. I don't know how Foreman's looking. I don't know if pa Patterson's going to play you know, much at all uh, with Bijan and Algier. We, we don't know. So I would say... Keep one or two of those running backs and then just throw darts on wide receivers that might have some potential upside, especially if your wide receivers are banged up. You kind of have to play your situation right now. And your situation is, hey, I got two wide receivers that are banged up. You know, it's concerning. So instead of holding and stashing all these running backs, address your team need. Better dynasty stash Noah Gray, who we saw play yesterday in place of Travis Kelsey, or Cedric Tillman, the rookie for the Browns. So I think the hope if you do stash Noah Gray is that Kelsey retires one day and he is the next man up. But you have to figure every year we have free agents, right? There's going to be tight end free agents. There's going to be the opportunity to draft tight ends. So Noah Gray 
is kind of like next man up. We saw it yesterday in the game. He got, you know, some work yesterday, but there, there, there's so much room for them to go and address the next Kelsey for them or the next man up through free agency and trade. So I think I'm going to go with Cedric Tillman, especially seeing Amari Cooper is what, uh, 29 years old, I believe. Uh, he has two more seasons in Cleveland. Got Elijah Moore there if he carves out a significant role with Deshaun Watson. That is good for fantasy football when it comes to Cedric Tillman in the future. Last question, Kendrick Bourne, wait and see or worth a deep stash at the moment? Who is Mac Jones throwing to? So in a healthy world, it should be Juju as the wide receiver one, Devontae Parker as the wide receiver two. Right now, he is dealing with a knee issue. Not sure about him. Ramondre Stevenson did a great job last season factoring into the passing game. He still should be involved this year. I know Zeke's there, but I don't think that should hurt his pass catching numbers. Uh, Mike Isecki is now on the Patriots. I like him. So does Bill Belichick. Him and Hunter Henry should both factor in. So Kendrick Bourne, I liked him in the past to a degree. I think he's had some creative usage back, you know, in San Francisco, but we kind of just know who he is, right? I think that, you know, what we saw yesterday with the Chiefs, like a bunch of guys getting involved, a couple here, a couple targets there, a few catches here. That might be similar to New England this year. Maybe Juju is like the number one target and then other guys are kind of sprinkling in their numbers. I don't know, but when it comes to Kendrick Bourne, I'm not wasting a roster spot in all honesty. Check us out on social media. We will ask for fantasy football mailbag questions every week, and I got you guys.